How the hell are you going to stay awake delivering gifts to 8 billion people all in a single night on milk and cookies alone? Bullshit. Let's make Santa something that will actually keep him awake. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and hello, my name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo, Michigan area. This is a surprisingly tasty combination, but it does not illustrate the point that I'm trying to make. I told him it wasn't going to be fine. Yeah, she was absolutely right. Um, I, I should have listened, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever the case, I have a problem with the mythos of Santa Claus. If I were to eat nothing but milk and cookies for like an entire night, I would vomit and then fall asleep <laughs> in a diabetic coma. I mean, like, that's like, you know, the whole point of things being Fair. You're, you are absolutely correct. I feel like we can give the guy a leg up though. There's, there's better options than that, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> which is what we're gonna do today with a drink that I call the North Pole All Nighter, which is a variation on a vodka Red Bull actually that looks nothing like a vodka Red Bull. <laughs> what this drink basically does is take um, a vodka Red Bull and a uh, gin fizz or like a Tom Collins and smash them together and give you a bunch of caffeine, a bunch of liquor, keeps you awake for a nice long time or approximately four hours until the caffeine wears off. To start off, we actually need to rim uh, a Kotlin style glass with uh, some red sugar. Eventually what you end up with is this nice kind of red sugar rim around the top. Put this aside and then we'll get started on this shaken cocktail. There's a couple ways we can start here. Um, the one that I'm choosing to go with is I'm going to start with an optional ingredient, egg white. A gin fizz distinguishes itself from a Tom Collins by including egg white and not being served over ice. This is an entirely optional choice you can make, and one that I actually haven't tried yet, which is why I want to do it. The whole point of setting it alongside a citrus juice, which we're going to do, is to emulsify it and make it safe to eat. You don't really have to worry about it, but if it's something you're not comfortable with, you can skip it or use an alternative like aquafaba, which is the juice of garbanzo beans. As far as making the rest of the drink goes, you can eat everything you see in front of you. Uh, some simple syrup, some Red Bull. In this case, I'm actually going to make this one seasonal by using the new winter uh, fig apple flavored one. Video sponsored by Red Bull. No, it isn't. That's probably not okay to say without actually contracting with them. Never mind. Some gin, and then this here is a combination of uh, cranberry and pom pomegranate juice. I found in working with both of these things that they're actually quite similar. A red berry that is either tart or bitter and adds a contextual flavor more than it does sweetness or other elements to a cocktail. In this case, you could use either cranberry or pomegranate and just stick with the one, or combine them the way that I am, you'll end up with about the same result. We'll also need a uh, half an ounce of, or excuse me, an ounce of lemon juice. Probably don't have to go full bore on this one, but we'll see. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. If you're looking at this bottle and wondering what's going on in here, uh, regular simple syrups will tend to crystallize um, over time as they sit in the fridge, or if you make a shelf-stable one like this is, leave it on the counter. That's perfectly normal. It's still safe to use and safe to eat. It just means that eventually your sugar will turn into a solid mass. Um, if you boil the bottle again, it'll dissolve and go right back to the way it was. Next, we're gonna do uh, one ounce of our cranberry, pomegranate, or combo juice. Finally, we're going to do two ounces of gin. I'm using Gordon's here like I did with the sugar plum sour. In this case, it doesn't really matter uh, which gin you use. We're just alternating, you know, using an alternative to vodka that has a little bit more character. I prefer gin for vodka. Gin is a lot better. Vodka is just alcohol. Gin has flavor. Yeah. And usually that flavor makes it not burn as bad, exactly. <laughs> which is a big deal. I'll do straight gin and tequila shots every day over a vodka shot. Yeah. So uh, there's an egg white in here. In order to emulsify that, we have to do what's called a dry shake, uh, which is where you shake the contents of the drink without any ice present. Um, that allows the acid and the protein in the egg white and lemon counter respectively to interact and create that foam that we're looking for. In this case, a lot of these ingredients are actually refrigerated. So there's gonna be some counter pressure here to hold the shaker together. But typically when you do this, it's going to want to expand out and can explode on you. So be sure that when you're shaking this, you get a nice good grip, uh, grip on it. There's another technique where you take the uh, coil off of a Hawthorne strainer and put it into your shaker with your drink, which helps agitate it and produce that foam a little bit faster and create a finer, thicker layer of foam. Did another sugared rim and already my hands were fucking sticky as hell. To start with our dry shake. Pray for me. Two hours later. <laughs> Once you're doing your dry shake, you can introduce ice however you usually do. I'm gonna stick with my typical uh, one large cube hole, one, uh, one large cube cracked. Now, our cold shake. Okay. 
We're gonna pull our glass back up and we're going to strain this out to keep those ice chunks away from it and pour it straight in. A combination of large amounts of ice and a coil being in the shaker is taking forever. There we go. Yeah, we really, <laughs> I, I probably didn't need to shake it that hard. This is a lot of fun. Now, could you theoretically leave this garnish with just the rim to complete it? Yeah, you could. Um, but we're gonna take this a little bit of an extra step. Um, before we do that though, we have to introduce our seasonal Feg Apple Red Bull. I don't know if this is true or not. There's a bit of a mythos about bartender spoons having the spiral on them, uh, allowing for like a direct pour of a like, carbonated liquid down into a drink if there's foam or ice so that it doesn't just sit on top. I think that's bullshit. I think it's more about the circular motion you get when you stir, but in either case, it does help pour carbonated drinks down past foam in things like gin fizzes and the Ramos gin fizz where it's extremely important. And you're gonna make sure it's clean. This was cleaned thoroughly before this. <laughs> Sit it down to the bottom of the glass in the center of your foam and pour your carbonated fluid over top. This will push all of that egg white up from the bottom, leaving the head intact and allowing our carbonation to mix with the fluid underneath. I believe we may have a situation where the foam is firm enough. Oh, come on, I was just getting to the good part. Well, I was about to say, I think our foam is thick enough to actually rise above the lip of the glass and hold its shape. I'm not gonna chance it though, so we're just gonna move on. <laughs> to complete the drink, we're gonna go ahead and do a lemon wheel and cherry crunch. We're gonna take these cherries, we're just gonna rest these right on top next to our lemon. And that is a North Pole all nighter. Yeah, I kind of overshook the egg white. Really, you don't have to shake it that hard. It's kind of, it's, this is kind of going above and beyond. Let's throw a straw in here now and give it a taste. That is a super thick foam, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's so weird. Hold up, wait a minute. Okay, I need you to taste this right now. To me, that tastes like a kind of tropical fruit. I think it's like a mango pineapple combo. Mm, that's good. Yeah, it's really good. It hides the gin pretty well. It's playing kind of like a background role there with those flavors. But that doesn't taste like fig and apple. It tastes like like oranges and and like pineapple uh, and it's somehow it's gone tropical on me. I don't know how that happened. I don't have a f frame of reference for what a fig tastes like, so I can't accurately like mm -hmm. say whether it's not fig or if it is. Yeah, I wonder if that's what it is then. Cause like fig, it's kind of like plums, but drier, less sweet. They're, they're good, but they don't taste like that. I think in combination with all those other flavors, we've accidentally made a tropically flavored drink. Maybe. But this is like awesome. Yeah, it's good. The egg white is completely unnecessary. It's totally superfluous. You don't need to do it. But if you feel like giving it a shot, it does, it does give it uh, a creamier texture. The, the carbonation and like the Red Bull isn't as noticeable. It feels a lot more subdued, very subtle, very gentle. Yeah, you know what, now that we've talked about it, it's the cranberry pomegranate juice I'm using mixed with the fig, and then the brightness of the lemon and apple, the tartness those give, in this. Somehow it just, it, it tastes like it should be a tropical flavor. But yeah, there we go. That is uh, that is a North Pole all-nighter um, to be made with or without the egg white. You can tell it's how thick it is because my straw is holding its place. <laughs> anyway, this has been a North Pole all-nighter a drink that will actually keep Santa awake. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this episode and want to give this a shot, the recipe is down in the description below. This one's a little bit simpler than some of the other stuff we've made, no fancy syrup, so this is a good way to go. And if you're like me and you like your energy drinks, it's gonna be right up your alley. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow with another episode of 25 Drinks of Christmas. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.